Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do couching. Now this is an embellishment technique that's good for outlining and then just for creating your own designs. Let's go ahead and get started. If you're gonna be doing couching by hand, it's best to use an embroidery hoop because we wanna make sure that the fabric is nice and tight. Now, if you're gonna be doing a design for some garment sewing or for a project, it's best to actually do all your designs in hand embroidery first before you cut out any of your patterns because sometimes embroidery can shrink the fabric, which will make your pattern piece a little bit smaller if you do it afterwards. You definitely wanna do it before you start sewing all your garment pieces together or your project pieces. Now, for me, I like to use my fabric marker and actually mark out the design that I'm gonna be stitching on. I'm gonna be working with two sets of thread. Now you can use the same color, I'm just gonna be using contrasting colors so it's easier to see what I'm doing. So first I have this silver thread and this is gonna be the main thread that's gonna be doing most of the outlining. And then I have this light purple and this is gonna be my working thread. So I'm gonna start here on the end, and first I'm gonna grab the main thread or the lead thread, and I'm gonna start on the end where I wanna start stitching. So there's already a knot at the end, so I'm just gonna pull it through, and then I'm just gonna leave it flat across here. Now you can see mine kind of bunches up there. So what I could do is just put my needle over here and then wrap it around my needle a few times just to keep it a little bit tighter. So that'll make it a little bit easier for me. Now you don't, I'm gonna be using embroidery floss. You don't have to use embroidery floss. You can actually use thicker strands of whatever you wanna use. And sometimes it's not possible to come up from underneath with your needle because it's too big. If that's the case and you just have your thread on top or whatever you're using on top, you could just fold it on top of itself like this and just kind of hold it into place just to get a few strands in. And then instead of just having the raw edge of your thread just hanging out there. But since I can actually come up from the wrong side, I'm gonna tie a knot and just leave it. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in my working thread. And I'm not gonna start in the end, but I'm gonna start a little ways in. I'm gonna start about an eighth of an inch in. And you can see I'm starting at the top part above the main thread. And then I'm gonna go directly below on the other side. So you're doing one little straight stitch. Like that. Then I'm gonna go up a little ways. And I'm always making sure that my main thread is going along the path that I had marked on my fabric. So going up a little ways. and then going directly down again. So I'm not going in the same hole, I'm going on one side of my silver thread and then the other side of my silver thread. Go up a little ways. And I'm trying to make sure that the distance between my stitches are pretty close to the same. I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing them. But you wanna be as consistent as possible so then it's gonna look as neat as possible. So this is all you need to do. So you just keep doing this. So I go above and then below, above and then below. And my purple stitches are always just little straight stitches. So here's a very simple design that I created. Now the silver thread is never going back through the fabric except for when I start that very first time it's coming up through the fabric. But the whole rest of the time it's just laying on top of my fabric until I'm ready to end it. So once I'm ready, I'm gonna take my needle with my silver thread, I'm gonna put it back through the fabric to the wrong side, and then tie a knot. And when I'm done, I can do the same thing with my purple thread as well. Now if you're doing something, so your main thread is actually really thick, let's say it's a piece of yarn like this. Just like I said with the start, at the back, when you wanna finish it, instead of just having a raw edge like this, what you can do, is just fold it on top of each other. So you have a folded edge and then do a couple of your working stitches, so the purple strands going over it. So that way it'll look a little bit neater. This is just because this is so thick, I can't even get it through a needle, let alone get it through my fabric without causing a huge hole. 
Another idea what you can do if you want to create a thicker border is you can stack these on top of each other. So I do one strand and then I can do another one right next to it and then another one right next to that. So that way you can really get creative in your design. If you're wondering if you could do this by machine, you can. It doesn't look exactly the same, but it's pretty close. We're going to be utilizing the zigzag stitch. So for this, they do sell special feet to help make this a little bit easier. I don't have one of those, so I'm just going to use my decorative stitching foot. And it has the wider opening up here. So one hand, I'm going to be holding my main thread. And for this, you probably can't use anything that's really thick, so I'm just using embroidery floss for my example. And I'm going to make sure that it goes right down the middle of that foot. So it's always in the center. I put on the zigzag stitch. You may have to experiment a little bit. Like for me, I made my zigzag stitch a little bit on the longer side. And then I test it to make sure that it's going to work. So it's just doing the same thing, but it's more in a zigzag fashion. These are the two examples side by side. We have the machine and we have the one done by hand. Now the machine is faster and easier, but I actually prefer the one done by hand. I just like the way it looks. And also I feel like I have better control when I'm doing curvy areas like this. So I hope this tutorial helps you in doing your own couching and designing your own stuff. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.